Today we're making Scandinavian Christmas decor. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Project number one is going to be some snow angels. I found these cute little dolls at the thrift store. These are some Dollar Tree snowflake ornaments. There's eight in a pack. We're gonna use six of these. Three of these little house shapes. Doesn't matter what size you get, this is what I had. And either paint or some coordinating paper. So sometimes when you take the backs off of these, the paper will come away from it. Sometimes it'll stick to the box. Do what you need to do to clean that up. Be sure you get around the edges and then trace your boxes onto your paper. And then we're going to cut it out. Now, right here you can see I traced it and now I'm gonna go inside the line. See that? If you do that, you're most likely to get the right size that you need when you glue this down to the backing of that little house frame or the house box, whichever way you want to refer to that. And we're gonna do one for each. Perfect fit. I'm gonna use a, just some school glue, just a glue stick. This is purple and then it disappears. I like to use this because I can see exactly where I'm putting my glue to make sure that I have plenty and everything will stick in place like it should. So I'm just gonna place it down. Don't worry about the little edge you see because the frame will sit on top of that and you'll never see it. Using my little tool, I'm going to just flatten it out. You can use a credit card, you can use a ruler, any flat, thin surface to kind of um, press it down to make sure that it is stuck down all the way. No bubbles, no wrinkles. And it has a automatic cling so we don't have to wait like we would maybe with a Mod Podge or um, a liquid glue. You can get your work done fairly quickly. Not quite as messy. Showing you again on one more of these boxes. And you're gonna do them all that way. Then I'm gonna take my six ornaments and some white chalk paint. You can use acrylic paint for this as well. Chalk paint just seems to, it's thicker and it seems to dry a little bit faster. And that matters when you're doing a lot of projects. I do a lot of projects, two videos a week. So that's a lot of work. I like my shortcuts where I can get them. Now we're gonna layer these because we want these to look like little snow angels. Because those ornaments have the little holes where the hangers go, I'm trying to arrange those where you won't see them once we put the little the doll down on there. I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue and just stack them. I'm kind of lining up the little points on the ends to overlap on each other and it looks like one continuous piece. Then I'm gonna add some glue down to put the cute little doll down. These little dolls are so cute. Look at the little hat. These were ornaments. They had little red uh, string hangers on them and I just took those off. Showing you one more time how I do this. You don't have to layer it if you don't want. I just like a layered look, but you could just use one. And you can use whatever type of ornament you want. Something flat though is usually the best. And since snowflake patterns and sort of little geometric designs are common with Scandinavian um, art, I wanted to use that here. Plus these colors, the gray, the red, the white. I'm trying to stick to that theme for this video. Now, this is how we are going to arrange these. The two matching dolls get matching houses and then the one that is different will go in the middle and she'll be in the tall house. You can paint the frames also if you would like, but I like the natural color for this. All right, and so now that I know where my frames are gonna go, I am confident that I can place these down without them being in the way of the frame when we put it back on. You can certainly put your frame on first and then do this step, but I wanna be sure that I don't make a mess with the glue and I can touch all over it um, with my hands without the frame on there like this. Can press it down and just a good, good idea. And I had the two beside each other so that because they are matching, I want them to be placed 
almost the exact same spot. Now I'm not going to measure and that would make it exact. I'm not going to do that, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and see that both of these are in about the same position. And I think that looks about right. And then I'll press it down. I'm going to use some E6000 and some hot glue on the back of the house so that we can reassemble them. Just placing that down here and there. I'm not overlapping my glue because it may interfere with the way the E6000 works. It's going to hold it in place for a long time and the hot glue is going to put it together quickly for this project. And it'll hold it in place until that E6000 is dry. Be careful, you don't want to put too much because it will kind of squish out and I did have that happen. Um, just a little bit on the inside and on the outside of the box, but I just rubbed it off on my fingers. You can see I'm just cleaning it up. And then you can see just a little bit on the inside, but I'm okay with that. I think this is really cute. And she looks like a little snow angel. So for the other two houses, same thing. We're gonna add some E6000 for long hold and strong hold. And I am using Gorilla Glue Sticks, so you know, that should do the trick, but you never know. I'm just gonna show you in case you have a little cheapy glue sticks like we like to use, right? We like to save money. And then go around it with the hot glue, flip that down. Be sure that you paint your backs or either put some decorative paper or some craft paper on the backs so that you don't see the mess. And here's how that one is going to look. Cute. Just for a little extra, and you might not like this, that's totally fine, but I thought I would do a little extra something on here. And this, these little pom-poms, you can get this type of stuff at Dollar Tree. I've seen like green, I think I saw a light blue. So if they have white, it would be really good for you to use um, on these Scandinavian style projects. I think they look really cute. And when I looked at inspiration pieces on Pinterest to see exactly what the style was, um, I felt like this worked with it. I'm going to do another here. You can also look at this as maybe little icicles hanging off of the house. It could be something like that. Or, you know, just leave it empty and don't put anything in there. You could also take some regular pom-poms that, that are not on a ribbon like that or a cord, and you can hot glue them into the bottom to make it look like, you know, they're close to the snow. I love these. I think they're cute, and I hope that you like them too. This video is part of a collaboration for Christmas Around the World. There's a bunch of ladies here. Check out the links below when you're finished with this video and give them some support. The next is a ornament mobile. I have done mobiles before or mobiles or whatever you want to call them, but I've done them before. I've done some for summertime in a video from way, way back. I'll try to link that. Um, but this, this is gonna be so nice. So I've got these 10 ornaments and this beautiful, to me this just screams Scandinavian. Um, I really like that. I've got some of that pitberry cord in red and white. I've got some greenery picks, greenery pieces, and an 11 inch wreath. So I'm gonna start by just taking these pieces and these are really just scrap picks that I've had and used in other arrangements and taken out. We're going to do this in like a clockwise or a counterclockwise pattern, just meaning that we want everything to flow in the same direction all the way around. I'm going to take matching pieces for the top and bottom and matching pieces for the left and right. Go ahead and use some hot glue if this is something that you want to be permanent. You can use some hot glue. You can also use floral wire to attach these down but I'm gonna be using the pitberry vines to hold it in place, but I'll let you see how that works shortly. Now, for the little spaces that are um, sort of have little gaps, I'm going around with my extras to see how I need to fill it in and cover up the little gaps. And then I will go back in with a little hot glue and place those back down when I know that everything is where it should be. 
You know how it is when you get to the bottom of your supply or you're doing an arrangement and you have one piece left and you're thinking, okay, where do I put this one piece? Where do I need this the most? So I was trying to stretch it out because I knew I had a very limited supply of these, but I thought maybe they would fit around this wreath and they do, so it worked out. All right, so we're gonna start with the white pit berry. And I'm just going to wrap this around. You can kind of weave it in behind the, uh, the vine there, the vine wreath. You can weave it in behind if you want to, or you can tie it or twist it off so that it stays down. When I go around, I'm going to make sure that I go behind some of the greenery and then in front of some of the greenery. You can see me moving the pieces because I want the pit berry to show but I don't want my all of my little flyaway pieces to be trapped down underneath there. I want it to be kind of a loose, airy look. Something very natural. And then when you get it all the way around, you can just clip it off. I don't like to use my scissors for this type of thing. These are some little, I think they're jewelry clippers. I got them at the thrift store, so obviously there's no label but I think that's what it is. They look sort of like cuticle cutters to me. So after the white is on, I'm gonna go back with the red. If you don't want to use two different colors, you don't have to. Um, for me, I wanted both of them because my ornaments are red and white. So I wanted to just carry that through the theme of this video. And I'm just gonna do the same process with the red. I'm gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna have some pieces tacked down and some pieces kind of flying away, just weaving it in and out. And this is going to help hold everything in place. When you get to the end, you can just twist your little end around a piece of the vine and it'll lock everything into place. So see, some of the pieces are sticking out, some of the pieces are laying flat, and I, I like this natural look. To me, the natural look is what really makes this, um, the wreath part or the top part of this mobile, 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 so pretty. And again, another little piece of glue. This one I forgot to glue down. Then I'm gonna take all of the little strings, these are just little cord strings, off of these beautiful ornaments. If you can't find something like these ornaments, get any type of a snow ornament or something that has that pattern on it and use that instead however you feel like you want to use this. Birds, snowflakes, geometric style, whatever. Um, I think they'll fit nicely into this pattern in this style. I just went through the front of there and tied it in a knot in the back, added a little hot glue to lock it in place. I'm gonna trim off this, this is like a cotton cord. I'm gonna trim it off at 18 inches and it's gonna be 18 inches for each piece. They will not all hang at the same length because we are going to test them out and you'll see how that is done. It's not hard to do, so don't be intimidated by it and think that you can't do it. You absolutely can. Uh, my camera angle is not the best, but I am going to do the best I can with my gift of gab to explain to you exactly what I'm doing here. All right, so then to hang it, I am going to take two 18 inch, could be slightly longer, strips of that same pit berry. I chose the white and I'm just going to twist it around the top of the wreath, not the bottom, the top, because this is going to be the means for us to hang this from whatever type of a shepherd's hook or whatever you want to use. Now see, it works very well of holding the weight, so that's, you don't have to worry about that. These pit berries are on a wire and that's going to help hold it in place. So I've just done, uh, if you want to imagine, 10, well, 12 and six, nine and three, north, south, east, west. That's where I'm connecting them down. And I'm raising them up to make sure that the length is the same on both ones. If you wrap it around and have the same amount in each little knot or wrapped piece, then it should be level when you pick it up but you can adjust it because it's not glued down, it's just twisted down. So you just adjust it as you go, pick it up, look at it, make sure it's level. Then taking another little piece of that pitberry vine, I am making a loop and then twisting it over on itself on the end 
and this will give us a loop to hang it. It's going to hold it right there. See? Very nice. And then I know it's going to work, so I'm going to flip it over and we're going to start adding in those beautiful tin ornaments. I know that since I have four of these, and the bird is going to be something different, but these four snowflakes, I am going to add them in four places just like before. I'm just going to start at whatever length for the first one. I'm not measuring it. We know that all the cords are 18 inches because we cut them at that length. You can adjust the height by just putting one knot in first, turn it over, lift it up, see where it's hanging, slide it down, adjust it, and then tie your triple knots in it. You can even secure it with hot glue if you want to once you've done all the hanging, all the tying onto this piece. So when you pull it up like this, the more string you have, the little loose end string, you see how long that extra piece is? That's going to make that ornament strand a little bit shorter than the other ones. So you want to make sure that they kind of are at different heights. That's the idea. And then I'll just turn it over and raise it up. And I know you can't see this, but this is me looking to make sure it's the right height. Now I'm going to go back up to the top here and tie around my bird. Lift it up, make sure that it's hanging at the right length. It's a little higher than the rest of them and that's what I want. This isn't a wind chime, so I'm not, I'm not aiming for the bird to hit the snowflakes. It's just to be pretty and move around in the wind. But I guess you could, if you wanted to do a little clapper or something, you could do that. And don't worry, I will give you a good look at this in the end. So I know all you can see right now is me tying on the bird. I'm going to tie it very, very securely. Trim that off. I make videos and put them out on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's free. The next is going to be wood ornaments, and I have two. I'm going to start out using any type of snowflake you like. The more geometric, the better. I don't even know if that's supposed to be a snowflake, but I thrifted it. And then these little ornaments. I think you can get something similar at the Dollar Tree to really save some money. And I'm going to use a sanding block, uh, emery board, snow white, and Christmas red. Some paint brushes, some paper. And get off all of the sticker. And then we're going to work on these rough edges. So I started off with my sanding block, but it just can't get in that little space very well. So I'm going to grab my emery board here and just start working on that. I'm going to get it as smooth as I can. If you don't want to do this step, you don't have to. You can always use some wood filler. But I want to do this on both of my ornaments because I want them nice and smooth and high-end looking. No splinters. Now, I want my... And be sure you wipe off the dust too before you start painting. You don't want to make it gummy or you know you don't want to mess your color up so the round ornament is going to be white and i'm just going to use that snow white paint to go all over this feel free to use your chalk paint if that's what you want to do and i'm just putting a little bit of extra down in each little crack there i'm going to use red on the bell and i'm going to go all over this bell i did paint both ornaments with two coats of paint and let them dry in between so I have no streaks. And then this little piece I am going to do in red as well. So you know I like the layered look. I'm going to start adding these down. A little bit of hot glue is going to put this in place quickly, but you can use an another type of adhesive if you would like. I'm going to put it on that bell. Perfect and simple. Then, this ornament's going to have a little more layering. I'm going to add this red one on it. I'm trying to be careful so I don't have little gushes of glue all over the place. I'm going to center that as good as I can by just looking. Press it down, and then I'm going to add this snowflake right on top of it. Let's go. Really nice layered look. Press it down, and then let it dry. 
Now we need hangers for these ornaments, right? Because they need to go on a tree. So I'm gonna use some of this red cord. You can get things like this at Dollar Tree. You could use Baker's twine, the red and white. That would be really pretty for this, I think. I'm gonna cut off two little pieces, about six inches each, maybe eight inches. And then, yeah, I think that's more like eight inches. Then I'm going to fold it over and then just make a simple knot right there in the end. You can do a double knot if you want. It's really not necessary because it's also gonna be glued down. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this other one. Pull it down. And then I decided, why don't we make these reversible? So I grabbed some paper that coordinates and I'm going to trace these ornaments on this paper. Very simple to do. I'm gonna do the same thing with the bell. And then I can cut those out. Very quickly, I wanna say thank you to those of you who have bought coffee for me recently. I appreciate you so, so very much for that. It helps my channel. And I also wanna say thank you very much for watching, sharing, liking, commenting, and all that good stuff because it has helped my channel so much. To the point I was able to go on vacation with my mother to meet her sister who she has not seen in forever. So that was very exciting and thank you for allowing me to be able to do that. Um, my work here on the channel is my paycheck. This is what I do for a living and without you guys watching I would not have been able to do it. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate it so much. So now you can see what I'm doing. I'm just taking those strands. I put the knot at the very top, put the flat part down on there, glue it down. Then I'm gonna add some glue on the back of here and go all the way around with the glue and add the paper. Now on the other one, I wasn't sure how fast the glue would dry. So I just did it in little sections, holding it in place. Whichever way works for you is gonna be the best way for you. And don't worry if you have a little parts where it's kind of hanging over you can just sand that off if it's overlapping or you know you got a little paper that still shows you can just sand it off and here's how those beautiful little ornaments are going to look you could do a bunch of these if you wanted here are the projects from scandinavia inspired christmas decor there's the mobile if you like it, I would love it if you would share it with others who might like it. I've always been fascinated with this style. I've always thought it was so pretty with the red and white. It just really screams Christmas to me. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs that are unique, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the new content that is put out. Next month is going to be my subscriber appreciation month in November. We'll be doing lots of giveaways. So be sure that you pay attention in the videos for little hints in November for your chance to win. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'll see you all again really soon. Check out those links and support the others. Bye.